Hello, hello, and welcome back to TGTV, and more specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my Watch Talk series. Today, we've got watches on the table. We're here to talk watches. Now, first things first, before I get into the piece today, a very special tour, Beyond Peace, I want to talk about. Let me talk about something which you've seen on my channel already before. This is a recent purchase of mine and something that I will actually be giving away personally with Grail Watch Club. This is a Rolex Green Oyster Perpetual and the rather nice 36 millimeter variant. You can win this very watch with Grail Watch Club. We've already given away the No Date Submariner from my last videos. If any of you caught the last series, we've already given that watch away to a lucky winner Alex. So Alex, if you're watching, well done, mate. But now you can win the Green Oyster Perpetual. This is very, very nice. This is probably one of the most hot releases that Rolex have done this year. Let me take this one off. I'm gonna put it on whilst I'm talking to you. It is actually stickered. It's boxed, stickered, uh, full set. GP steel skeleton for anyone that cares. There is a video about that. And it's a uh, rose gold brother and ceramic sister as well, also on the channel. So this is the very watch that we'll be giving away. So if you enter right now, Tickets are limited. They may well have sold out by the time I'm actually putting this video out. Um, so they have sold out by now. Sorry about that. And if it's a new watch by now, uh, go and check it out. So go and hit the site anyway, and you'll see whether or not this is still available to play for. But there we go. This watch is now available with Grail Watch Club. Limited amount of tickets in support of Roy Castle Lung Cancer Charity. Uh, and once the tickets are gone, they are gone. It is all transparent, all fully legitimate, and personally backed by me. And I will be meeting the winner to hand over this very watch in person on YouTube Square in one of my cars. And we'll be filming it uh, as much or as little as the winner wants. So that is very exciting. That is available to win. As nice as the Green Oyster Perpetual is, we're not actually here to talk about that. We are here today to talk about, actually, not in this box. There's another watch in there. We'll be talking about that shortly. We're not here to talk about that one. Got watches coming out my ears here. We are here to talk about a very special uh, sports watch from a brand called Laurent Ferrier. Now, many of you, if you're into your watches and you're super nerdy, you will have heard of Laurent Ferrier. If you're into your vintage motor racing, you may have heard of Laurent Ferrier, but if you're just into your watches on kind of a more, um, less nerdy level, should we say, you've probably heard of your Patek Philippe's, you may have heard of your FP Jean's, but you probably won't have heard of Laurent Ferrier. If you stay tuned to my socials, you will have done. However, I bought this piece, the Laurent Ferrier Grand Sport Tourbillon some time ago. And uh, some of you actually spotted it on my socials back in November, 2020, when I bought this. This is probably the, one of the most understated watches I've got, but also one of the most expensive, and also, to me, one of the most interesting and the most exciting pieces. And it's definitely, definitely the rarest watch that I've got. We're gonna get into all of that. So, who is Laurent Ferrier? What is Laurent Ferrier? And why on earth have I got this watch, which looks pretty boring, but I'm seemingly so excited about it. So let's go into the brand history first, and then we're gonna get into the watch. I'm gonna put it on whilst I chat to you and do all the boring stuff and give you a little bit of background as to why this particular watch and this particular brand is going places and it's so cool. So then Laurent Ferrier is a Swiss watch manufacturer founded in 2009. The name Laurent Ferrier is directly coming from the brand's founder of the same name. The brand actually produces uh, 150 to 200 pieces a year, uh, 150 in 2018, so probably around 150 to 200 now. The brand is also headquartered in Switzerland. Now the founder, Laurent Ferrier, Born in 1946, was the son and grandson of watchmakers. His father worked on watches, giving young Laurent an early exposure to Hort horology. He trained at a watchmaking school and joined Patek Philippe shortly after. There, he worked on the prototype of the Genta-designed Nautilus, which you all will have heard of. Laurent Ferrier was also a semi-professional car racer, driving various models such as the Lotus 18, Porsche 934, Porsche 935, and you're starting to get a little clue as to what this is doing here. And in 1979, he finished third at Le Mans, behind none other than Paul Newman. It was during his racing years that he met and befriended Francois Servanin, who would later become his associate. He worked at Patek Philippe for the next 30 years, attaining the rank of technical director before launching his own brand in 2009. History lesson is almost over then. Some of that that I just told you was very, very important to the tale of this watch. And some of that is why this watch is so special. So, Laura Ferry there, for those unfamiliar, have been producing pretty much nothing but dress watches since they were founded. This is actually their first sports piece. It was released in 2019. It was actually released to celebrate the 10 year anniversary of A, starting of the brand, B, 
the 50th anniversary of the 1979 uh, Le Mans race with Laurent Ferrier and his brand partner, where they finished third with Paul Moomin, as I just spoke about, and also the 10 year anniversary of their first Tourbillon as well. So this particular watch is a kind of pretty much a triple anniversary piece, two 10 year anniversaries and a 50th anniversary as well. So really, really special piece. And not only that, it's the brand's first sports watch as well. Now you're all still thinking, but TG, that is probably the most boring looking watch I've ever seen. Why are you so excited and why are you still talking about it? It gets more interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get the obvious things out of the way. This watch has actually got a bit of an Aquanaut and a kind of Nautilus vibe about it. It's got uh, pretty much a mix between a cushion and a tonneau case. It's a 44 millimeter dial. It's 100 meters water resistant and is made out of titanium. So nothing that groundbreaking there. However, it is a nice design. It is fairly unique the way the strap comes into the into the lugs like that. Um, so we've got its own design language and the crown there is very, very long on Ferrier. It's kind of almost an onion shape. I don't think that's probably the technical word for it, uh, but it looks like an onion and that's something that Laurent Ferrier features in all his watches, even his dress watches. Interestingly, despite being 100 meters water resistant, it's not got a screw in crown. It's actually just push in. It's a really nice case shape. There's a lot of sharp edges, a lot of smooth edges, and the way they all play together is really, really nice. There's a lot of brushing, uh, some fine polishing in there as well. It's a really, really nicely made case. And the dial to me is even more exciting than that. We've got this kind of gradient uh, brown dial, which kind of radiates out into kind of a darker brown on the edges with this kind of bright orange loom on there as well. So the markers in this bright orange right against the brown uh, kind of gradient dial, which is kind of almost akin to the north this, the way that kind of radiates out and gets darker towards the outside. Um, but it's a really nice shade of brown and it goes against the kind of uh, brownie kind of grade into strap really nicely as well. So um, it's winning already for me in the kind of color scheme, which hasn't really been done on a lot of watches that kind of brown and orange. I don't, I can't think of another watch off the top of my head that uses that color scheme. Now the size 44 millimeter, usually I would err away from 44 mil watches. I'm kind of more of a 40 mil and a 36 mil man, um, but don't let the size put you off. This case is relatively slim. It's obviously very lightweight. It's comfortable on that rubber strap and it actually wears more like a 42 than a 44. So um, for those thinking, oh, a 44, that's gonna be foul. Um, I've got really skinny wrists and it fits me like a glove, really nicely fitting. Coming around the back of the watch then, and we're gonna get into the obvious thing right in the back of the watch very shortly. And uh, we've got a stainless steel clasp here, again, which is really nice. It fits together really well. Um, there's no obvious branding on the clasp there whatsoever. You've actually only got the branding on the inside of the clasp there. So really, if someone's having a look, they're not really gonna have a clue what you've got on your wrist. Now the exciting bit, in the back of the watch there, Laurent Ferrier could have opted with this watch um, for his kind of standard hand wind movement, I can't remember the name of it, or the micro rotor movement, but what instead he did, which is very fitting for celebrating 10 years of his first tourbillon, he has chucked a tourbillon in the back of that watch, which is absolutely bonkers because there's no sign of it on the front, bar a very faint word tourbillon, but in the back is an absolute party. In the back of this watch, it is absolute artwork, it is ridiculous. And I find myself looking in the back of this watch more than probably at the front. It's very much uh, if you know, you know kind of piece. If you ever see one of these in the wild, you've done very, very well because this was limited to only 12 pieces worldwide. And I believe two of them were friends and family. So realistically, I think only 10 of them got released to the public, which is bonkers. I've got number five here and I would show you the box and papers um, but cut a long story short, I actually lost this watch very recently. I don't know if I should be saying this, but I actually do want to give a little shout out to my insurance company. I lost this watch, uh, I would say a month or so ago. I mean, this video is going to go out whenever, um, but I lost this watch anyway. And understandably, I was uh, quite stressed out. And you may ask me how I lost this watch. Um, do any of you remember when I had my Range Rover on Instagram and it got a puncture and there was just a day from hell? That day, this watch actually popped off my wrist. I know it did now, because um, obviously I found it, because it's right here, um, but I had to claim on my insurance because I lost it. I had no idea where it was. Um, so cut a long story short, the box and papers are still with the insurance company. I need to get them back off the insurance company but the box and papers are mega. They're absolutely massive. If they were sat here, they would literally be, you know, about this size, but the box and papers are really, really cool because that's what ties into here. Inside the box, there is actually an outline and I'll show you some pictures on the screen. There's an outline of the Porsche 935 racing car. This very car on the inside of the box, you get a little kind of a loop thing with it. Um, you get your 
paperwork and whatnot underneath it, but the watch box is absolutely massive. So I'm actually quite happy there. The insurance company are now storing it free of charge. Um, however, that box is actually numbered to the watch as well. So as I was saying before, this is number five of number 12. There's actually five of 12 inside the box so each box is numbered to the watch as well so really kind of cool really nice touch uh, and and that box is just an absolute event so yeah absolutely enormous anyway i get excited about box and papers so back to the watch then um yeah you've got this amazing tall wheel movement in the back then so nerdy stats it is the caliber lf 619.01 your functions are hours minutes seconds and you've got a double spiral tall wheel in there the diameter of the movement is 31.6 millimeters the thickness is 5.57 millimeters the power reserve is 80 hours and it is a manually wound movement the frequency is 21,600 vibrations per hour and it's a 23 joule movement total components is 188 and the chronometer is certified at the Besançon Observatory. If you're Swiss or French, I do apologize for that. And the movement actually features special ruthenium treatment to the plates and the bridges. So you'll notice on the back of it there, uh, the bridges, the kind of the dark bits there, are kind of inlaid with gold. And that's because it's got this special ruthenium. I mean, I don't even know what ruthenium is, but um, that's what happens if you, if you treat something with it. So really, really cool. And then, as you can see on the case back there, it says 1979 Le Mans 2019. So that's your anniversary bit. And at the bottom where it says ACA Proto, 05-12 that is indicating that it is five of 12 pieces ever made now the elephant in the room the price just before i tell you have a little think what you might think that was retail price how much you think that watch might have been uh, when it came out brand new retail price you went oi laurent give me one of your grand sports have a little think what that might be have you guessed yet Retail price on that was 185,000 US dollars. 185,000. I mean, that is quite a lot of money. However, since I've even had this piece, that doesn't even seem that ridiculous anymore. When you look at even steel Royal Oak uh, skeletons, what are they now, James? Do we know what they are? Well over 100 grand for an open work steel um, Audemars PGA. Kind of makes that look okay value-ish, really, sort of. Uh, I mean, even even this, this is still open worked watch. What are they, 30, brand new? 28? Um, resale, they're about sort of 21, 22. Maybe a bit more now, 24 maybe. Um, but yeah, so I guess in terms of intrinsic value, what are you getting for your money? Um, and you know, a lot of these pieces are about exclusivity, and they're about kind of engineering, and they're about finishing. Uh, and if you're looking for any of those things, this knocks spots off, uh, you know, Patek AP, it really, really is up there. It's one of the most nicely finished watches I've ever had. It's definitely the rarest. It's definitely the most exclusive. Uh, and in this day and age where, you know, people are just being punched in the head for everything, I think it's quite nice to have something that really is under the radar, unless you meet another, you know, watch boffin. Uh, then you can have an early conversation. Uh, that said, I've just put it on the internet how much this is worth. So um, I guess it's not really under the radar anymore. I guess I've kind of spoiled it. So if you've got one of these and you wanted to stay under the radar, uh, TGTV's ruined it for you. Now, obviously I didn't pay 185,000, which is what, depending on what the exchange rate is today, 150, 160 grand. Uh, there is a stockist of Laurent Ferrier. I think the limited edition, Yep, There's right. a dealer called uh, the Limited Edition in the UK, and they stock uh, Laurent Ferrier pieces. They've actually got the new version of this. So Laurent Ferrier have released a new version of this watch. It's got a blue dial with orange markers on it. It actually comes with a bracelet on it. That is actually available on their uh, dealership site now, I think for about 150 grand, 155 grand, something like that. Um, I do like the new variant of this, and that is limited to 12 pieces as well. As I say, it comes on a bracelet, which I kind of, I, I don't like as much, I must be honest. Uh, and it is a blue dial as well. And obviously blue dials have been completely done to death uh, over and over and over again. Uh, and it's not your Le Mans anniversary edition. It's not your um, 10 year anniversary of the Tourbillon. It's not your 10 year anniversary of the brand. Um, so to me, this is the grand sport worth having. Uh, the other one is a very, very, very nice watch. And if you've got one of those or you're getting one of those, then um, crack on. But for me, this is the one worth having. Um, you know, if you're gonna have one, I think this is the boy. Uh, and these are obviously sold out by now. There are none of these on the open market. I've got alerts set up on Chrono24 um, for when these come up because I'm interested in the in the kind of the values of them. 
Uh, I paid 70 odd for this, uh, which I still thought was quite a lot of money for a kind of a watch that's pretty much unknown. But I think when you compare it to a, a steel 5711 um, with no tourbillon, no complications, nothing uh, made in the thousands actually. How many 5711s are they making? Tens of thousands, aren't they? Loads. Yeah, loads and loads of them. Um, which actually you see the whole time now, along with all the fakes that everyone wears as well. Um, I don't think the 5711 is quite as exclusive as it used to be. Um, and this was around the same price, if not a little bit less than a blue 5711. What are they trading for, 80K? Yeah. 80, 90. 80, 90 grand. So for me, 70 on this was a no-brainer. I know it's a lot of money, um, but I think the potential future value on this as well, uh, the brand Laurent Ferrier uh, continues to gather pace, uh, continues to gather notoriety, uh, like FP Jean have uh, in the past few years. And combined with the fact there's real provenance to the brand, I think this is a good bet for years to come. I think this will be one of those pieces that just goes through an auction in a few years and everyone thinks, where the hell did that come from? So. Really cool. Um, it's definitely, I don't think gonna lose any money at all. And indeed, the last one I saw go on Chrono 24 went for 105,000 and it sold the same day. So I think we're up on this one, which is always nice, um, but I'm gonna hold on to it. If I ever have to sell it, then I will, but um, I'll keep it for as long as I can afford to do so. Um, so yeah, really, really happy with this. Very happy with my uh, Laurent Ferrier. Um, so yeah, so, some of you spotted this on my wrist. Uh, I gave some of you a little quiz on Instagram the other day uh, about this particular model. Why I've bought this, I don't know. I think it was about 100 quid off eBay, actually. This, But this was uh, Laurent Ferrier's racing car uh, in Le Mans that year. Um, and it was the only one left on eBay, so I just thought, it's quite cool. Quite like it. Am I really nerdy for doing that? Yeah. That's really boring of me, isn't it? That's awful, yeah. For those that thought I was cool, I'm actually not. I buy stuff like this, and I find it exciting. Um, but no, really, really cool. It's got his name on the side of it. Um, I have no interest in really meeting the bloke, um, but I just find the whole history quite cool. So, I mean, it's a racing car Porsche, and the silhouette of that is on the box set, so all very exciting. I think, then, it's time to leave you all alone. I think that's that. History and nerdy Laurent Ferrier lesson over and done with. They're not paying me, by the way. I bought this. Um, I, they don't even know I'm doing this video. They might hate me for doing it. I don't know. Um, but I did want to buy, recently, their green limited edition they did. Um, they released a green doll, uh, I can't remember what it's actually called, the classic or something, with a hand wind movement. Uh, 30 pieces they made of that with a green doll. Um, in the end, I didn't buy it because it's got a leather strap and it's a bit too dressy. I look like a 15 year old most of the time. I dress like a tramp and I just think sports watches suit my behavior and the kind of uh, my kind of uh, look, if you can call it a look. Um, but the, you know, the green doll variant was just a little bit too dressy for me. Really nice watch. I think it's about 26,000 pounds retail. And I think resale on Chrono 24 is about 30, 31 now. So maybe missed the boat on that in terms of making some money, um, but it's not something I would have worn. So I don't like to buy stuff just to sit on and then flip. I like to wear in the meantime as well. So yes, right. That's it then. I'm gonna leave that there. I'm sure I've forgotten stuff about the brand. There's loads of other models they make. They make the, um, the travel time. They've got a micro rotor, Galet. Um, they've got all sorts of stuff. So make sure you go and check them out. They've obviously got other Tourville models as well. So if you're into slightly more dressy watches, um, they've got a whole range. Uh, but as I said, they're, they're not paying me, so I'm not gonna advertise them too much. Uh, for now then, if you wanna win this, if it's still available by the time this goes out, hit grailwatchclub.com. And if all tickets for this have sold out, don't fear because there'll be another collectible hot model on there available to win. There'll be something else that I've bought in and that'll be on there available to win. And we'll be handing this one over in that case to someone very shortly. So get in the mix. I will leave the link to that below. And as always, tickets will be supporting Roy Castle Lung Cancer Foundation as well. So that's a really important charity to myself and also uh, my co-founder of Grail Watch Club, uh, James, who's actually sat over there, but I'm kind of talking to them, but you're there. Um, I'll leave his Instagram on the screen. He's a bit of a watch guy, should we say? Can I call you a watch guy? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've called you worse on WhatsApp. His page has got loads of watches on it as well, and he's an avid collector. Uh, it was just our way of kind of uh, being able to kind of legitimize buying things in, really, and just indulging a, a habit, just basically doing some man maths on some watches and just enabling us to be nerdy. And also get you guys and girls involved, because it's a really cool feeling. We've given away that sub, and actually I was buzzing after that. We do the live draws on Instagram as well. It's on my IGTV, uh, the last draw. So if you wanna go and see how the winners are selected and all that stuff, it's completely transparent. It's all live on my Instagram. So go and check that out. For now then, I think 
I'm going to leave you all alone. I found that earlier, but I'm actually going to leave you alone now. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've kept up to this point. Hopefully I haven't bored you to tears. Stay tuned for another Watch Talk very soon where I get into what's in that box. See you guys.